Using dual and triple splitters is an alternate way to take two or three samples simultaneously using just one pump. Splitters can only be used for low flow sampling. Pump calibration with splitters is done the same as single sample calibration, except you calibrate and adjust each port one at a time. Review the pump calibration data form to determine what type of media was used on which port during pre-calibration by the laboratory. To calibrate the pumps, they must be charged. If the pumps have not been charged within the past 48 hours, you must recharge the pumps prior to sampling. Start the pumps so they can be warming up. Open the opaque flap on the top of the pump and push the button to start the pumps. They need to run at least three minutes before you begin the calibration. Be sure to verify the pump flow rates in an area where you are not exposing the media and equipment to the contaminant, like an office setting. All pumps have the lab calibration information on the pump calibration data sheets provided. Set up the pumps with the correct media in line, with the field rotometer as shown. The order of the components for dual splitter calibration is pump, short length of tubing, constant pressure controller, long length of tubing, wide tubing marked A and B, two adjustable low flow holders, sorbent tubes, and rotometer. For calibration triple splitters, set up the calibration sampling train as follows. Pump, short piece of tubing, constant pressure controller, long tubing, triple splitter, and calibration tube, rotometer. The triple splitter will have three ports labeled A, B, and C. You can utilize the same calibration tube if the catalog number is identical. If not, use proper tube number as listed on the pump calibration data form. Use a tube breaker to break both ends of the tube to provide an opening at least one half the internal diameter. Insert the open sorbent tube into the first holder's rubber sleeve marked A with the arrow on the tube pointed toward the holder. If the tube does not have an arrow, then place the end of the sorbent tube with the smallest sorbent section or backup section into the tube holder toward the pump. Connect the rotometer to the exposed end of the sorbent tube. The adjustable low flow holder allows flow adjustments in the low flow range between 0.10 and 0.50 liters per minute, 0.1 and 0.5. Do not adjust the pump itself at any time while verifying calibrations. Only the low flow holder should be adjusted. To adjust the flow rates on the triple splitter for the port you are calibrating, loosen the screw on the bottom of the splitter to reveal the port's calibration set screw. With everything sitting on a level flat surface, check the ball float in the rotometer. Adjust the flow rate by turning the flow adjustment screw on the adjustable low flow holder until the rotometer indicates the desired flow. Be sure to take your rotometer reading at eye level and use the center of the float for the value. Do not adjust the flow on the pump at this point. Only adjust the flow on the low flow holder. After you are satisfied with the flow rate, verify the value matches that on the pump calibration data sheet and repeat the previous steps for additional port marked B for dual splitters and B and C for triple splitters. The pump calibration data sheet has separate calibrations for A, B, and C ports so be sure to record your value with the correct tube sleeve. You can utilize the same calibration tube if the catalog number is identical. If not, use the proper tube number as listed on the pump calibration data form. Remember, a field blank should be collected for each sample set and should accompany the monitor during all periods except actual sampling. For more detailed information, watch our field blanks video. Remove the calibration media cap it, and mark it for post-calibration. Install new media for sampling into each port of the splitter. Screw on the tube covers over each tube. Attach the pump to the worker's belt toward their side or back. Attach the splitter on or near the front of the shirt collar or as close as practical to the nose and mouth of the employee. Position the excess tubing so that it does not interfere with the work of the employee. Turn on the pump and record the starting time to the minute. The counter records the minutes the pump is operating and should read zero when you start the test. Observe the pump operation for a short time after starting to make sure it is operating correctly. Check to ensure hose connection is screwed tightly to eliminate leaks.
It is a good idea to check the pump throughout the workday to make sure it is still operating at the flow rate you set. Ensure that the sampler is still assembled properly and that the hose has not become pinched or detached from the media or the pump. After sampling is completed, turn off the pump and remove the equipment. Then, remove the tube covers, remove the sorbent tubes, and immediately seal the tubes on both ends with the red caps provided. Label the tubes. Perform the post-calibration the same way you did the pre-calibration, using the marked calibration sorbent tubes, but do not make any set screw adjustments. Just record the flow rate on the pump calibration sheet. The pre and post rates should be within 10% of each other. If they are, average the flow rates to determine the flow rate to be used to calculate the air volume. Multiply the flow rate, LPM, by the total time sampled in minutes to get the air volume in liters. Record the total liters on the field pump data sheets and the chain of custody. If the post sampling rates are not within 10%, OSHA considers the samples screening samples and if the analytical results show high levels, resampling is recommended. Then, complete the chain of custody form. It is important that you include all the information requested in order to ensure the turnaround time of your samples. Remove the pink copy and keep this for your records. Send the white and yellow copies in with the samples to the lab in the large Ziploc bag. Questions? Contact SGS Galson by phone or IH Live Chat.